Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about something new. We're going to talk about some VBA in Excel. This is just a recording of the one hour little workshop that I had with two graduate students on our day off. It's raw. There's no editing in it. It's a little bit long, but I think it's a nice video that I wanted to put out there for anybody that's interested in looking deeper into VBA in Excel. I'm a big fan. I love it. Most of my data processing I do in Excel because it's the easiest way to communicate with others. I do use other programs and other software, but this one's definitely my favorite. And down the line, you're going to see that I'm going to bring Excel into playing around with OpenSeas as well. Enjoy. All right. So the very first step that I wanted to go through with you guys is how to set up Visual Basic on your computer. As you can see in my Excel here, you see my Excel, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you see I have a developer tab. Mm -hmm. Do you? I don't. Let me just check it. Mine. I do not have developer right. tab as well. Okay, so here's how we're going to turn that on. It's pretty easy. So you do have it, you just, you're not showing it. So mm -hmm. you go up here on the top left and there's a little pull down arrow. Mm -hmm. And you want to go to more commands. And that brings you to the quick access toolbar. You want to go to the customized ribbon. This is pretty much where you can add and remove buttons from mm -hmm. your menus. So it's a kind of nice feature in Excel. It doesn't always show you everything. And if you scroll down on the right, your main tab of developer is probably checked off. Yeah. And so you want to check that on. Okay. Okay. And then you click OK, and now you are developers. Yes. Gotcha. It's a good way to keep people from messing with code. Um, and from now on, you will always have it. It's, it's associated with your Excel, not with the spreadsheet that you're working on. Okay. Okay. So you go to a different computer, you have to do the same thing, even if somebody passes you mm -hmm. a file that has macros. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you click the tab and you can actually see the Visual Basic and everything. Okay. So I'm starting with a brand new sheet. And we're going to do our very first um, writing of VBA. The way we're going to do it is we're going to have the computer do it for us. So if you go to your developer tab, you see that you've got a button here that says record macro. Mm -hmm. This does, it's really cool because it records all your moves mm -hmm. and writes them into Visual Basic. So a great, it's a great way to get things started, and then you can go in and um, change the code and expand it and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write one, two, three. Over on the right-hand side, I'm going to write two times this. Do we enter. To record macro, or we're not recording yet? Oh, thank you. Start over. <laughs> <laughs> that was practice. All right, so we click record macro and we can do, we want to give it a, t a name and you can always change the name so you don't have to come up with anything else, anything too fancy. Uh, you can, if it's something that you will do a lot of times, let's say you want to do some editing of a graph or something like that, you can give it like a control T, for example, right? Mm -hmm. and so then you can repeat this operation again and again. I do this a lot when I'm editing graphs uh, and plots if I'm just doing a repeated action. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of this record macro actually we're going to write vba oh okay yeah but we're going to do it have the computer record this macro for it, this vba yes. code it's just a neat way for you this is how there's two ways to get started one is to do it like this two is to take somebody else's script but oftentimes i will do this if i have to do an operation again and again i will just Thank record you. it see how it's done and then expand on it okay and i will show yes. you so I'm recording this macro, and I'm going to go back into this cell. I'm going to write one, two, three, four. To the right, I'm going to write equals two times. It's on the right-hand side. Okay. And then I'm going to copy all the way to the bottom. Then I'm going to grab these two axes, and I'm going to insert a plot. And I'm going to change this line to red. 
and I'm going to change and I'm going to add X to these titles. Uh, y and X. Okay. Oh, also, I'm going to name this cell, this, this group of cells. I'm going to call this my X list. You see what I'm doing up on the top left hand side? Um, yes. Yeah. So I typed in a name. So you don't have to go through formulas and name lists. You can just grab your cells. It could be one, it could be a list, and give it a name. You press enter. So that's my list of axes. Okay, I've defined an array that I could use if I want in DBA. Another way of naming it is if I do Y list and I grab this bunch of columns, this bunch of data, I go to formulas and I say create from selection. What create from selection does is it names the cells six through nine that I've selected and gives them the name that I've defined in the first row. Mm -hmm. Because I'm gonna pick here, you, you see this little window. And so I'm gonna say, okay, pick the name that's the top row is the name, the rest is the data. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. And so now you'll see if I just select these, it's gonna tell me the name. Oh, great. Right. And if I want to go and find where those are, there's a pull down and go, oh, show me where X list is. Oh, there's X list. Okay. So I'm, I'm throwing in a whole lot of little commands here and there, okay? Nice mm -hmm. features of um, Excel. Now I'm going to stop recording. So I'm going to go back to developer and I'm going to stop recording. Now I want to see what it is that I did, okay? And this opens, if you click the button Visual Basic, mm -hmm. it opens up a window that shows you the code okay. of what you did. You'll see a lot of code here because I have some other Excel windows. Whoa, where's the other one? Close that one, okay. And I'm gonna move this to the right-hand side so we see what it is that we did, okay? So if I go to this book that we just wrote and I look at, um, in VBA, you'll see that these are all the Excel files that I have open, okay? And each one has two sets. One, it has the, the sheets. And I never really play with the sheets too much, okay? This is when you've got certain, this is a little bit more advanced. But when you go to modules, these are all the little packets of code. You could do some nice bookkeeping. You don't have to have all the code in a single module. Are you okay. supposed to double, how do I get the script to show? Because I opened VBA and it, and there's nothing like showing right now, just the- Did you the... stop the record? Yes. Okay, uh, do you have what's on the left-hand side? Yes. Okay, but you see where it says modules? Mm -hmm. Click on modules and then you click on module one. Do I double click or something? Yeah, double click. Okay, got it. Okay, this mm -hmm. is the code of everything that we just did. Okay, mm -hmm. a lot of it is kind of garbage. Okay. Um, so including but, that you'd be making a graph as well, right? Yeah. So this is where I filled in the, the, the values. Mm -hmm. This is when I put in a formula. Okay. Then I did an autofill. Remember that I double clicked it and expanded? Uh huh. Okay. Then here is when I said select the cells. And I did some, um, I added a chart. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I did some formatting to the chart. I made it red, the red line. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I added X axes and Y axes va values. I give it colors. This is when I did the naming of the cells. And uh, this is when I did some other things and some names, okay? And this was just kind of just to show you that you, you can, every action you record and you can do it again now if you want, if you rerun this, okay? But now we're gonna do it, I'm gonna place myself in a second cell, in a second um, worksheet, okay? And I'm gonna play this macro. 
it, see what happens. It doesn't always work, but um, let's try it, okay? So I, I place myself in the macro. It has no in input variables. You know, you don't, you're not calling it, because it's kind of like a function here, okay? So I can just call it by itself. So I'm gonna press play and let's see what happens. Oh, let's see. It, it put in the numbers, but now it does, oh yeah, and this is a, it, repeating macros doesn't always work. It didn't like having to name the cells, the, oh, the axes, okay? Some things work well in macros, some don't, and you kind of have to play around a little bit, okay? But you saw that it repeated the actions that I had done. So what I typically will do is... The only thing it didn't, it wasn't able to do is was the, like the highlighted line. Yeah, so, oh yeah, so when it gets to the highlighted line, if you have this open, it shows you where the error is. Oh, got you. Okay, and it's stuck on that. You can like keep trying, uh, or you just kind of go back to debug. I'm like, okay, forget it. I can't give it a name. Uh, sometimes, there. let's remove this little lines that are command con connected. Okay. And so now I'm gonna try it again. Let's play, poof, doesn't like graphs. Yeah, the axis name, I've never been able to get it to work. So if it's something you wanna do, what I typically do is I Google. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's remove this and remove, I'm gonna remove the whole, that, okay? The whole thing that to do with the graph. Editing graphs, there's only so many things you can do. It's kind of cool sometimes that you can use it. I use it to just recolor lines. Uh, mm -hmm. Press play again. Oh, look, it ran through the macro. Yeah, great. Okay, it just put the graph somewhere else. And somehow it brought us back to sheet one. I don't know, but this is just to show you the things that you can do. It's, it's, a, it, it's a way to get started if there's a couple of things you want to do. Yeah. It, it also uh, put the access name as well. I mean, everything, everything, everything transferred to the second sheet, but what was those error? Uh, I don't know. You have to spend the time yeah. trying to figure it out. You can Google it and stuff. Yeah. So sometimes it's like in formatting it or little things like that. And that's why sometimes I'll just go through the brute force method and just kind of select what works for me. Um, but this was just kind of just like a little demo on, on getting there. Uh, okay. So these are just a process. This was just a demonstration on how you could do certain actions. You can record them and you've got your VBA script. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, the way I, I actually kind of use it nicely is I'm going to just start a new sheet. Okay. Save this. And I'm going to start a new worksheet. Never know where it's going to appear. Here's my new worksheet. And um, what I'm going to do with this worksheet is I'm going to define a function. Let me see. I'm going to go to developer, Visual Basic, and it brings me, of course, to this that I already have open, right? I got to make sure I'm in the right. Um, I believe this is the one. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a module. Okay. Mm -hmm which is just a little packet. And you know what? I'm going to close my other Excel sheets because I think they just cause confusion for me more than anything else. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you see, I only have one worksheet now, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's my module and I'm going to call this module my utility function. You see how I'm down here on the bottom right, yes. box? And I renamed it, okay? Called the utility functions. And I am going to start a function, okay? So this is how I use it. I say function uh, sum, and I'm gonna take A comma B, okay? And it automatically writes end of function. So you guys know MATLAB and any other sort of programming languages, right? Right. So yeah. this is exactly like those, 
just the formats are slightly different, very, you know, barely different. Instead of like, um, if A equals B, so here, let's write it. If A equals B, in MATLAB, you don't have to. In Python, you have to put a colon. In Excel, you have to write then. Okay. Um, it doesn't sum. have two, two the equal sign, right? No, and that's equals. the other thing, is you don't do the double equal sign. Each language has this little syntax. Um, and uh, sum equals two times A. Else, sum equals A plus B. And if, okay. And the formatting doesn't automatically do it for the editor. So this is a trivial way of writing this thing, right? So now what I can do is if I have five, four, five, six, seven, here's my values of A1, A2, right? Mm -hmm. Eight, nine. What I can write here is this equal to, now I've defined a new function. I've defined this as, and make sure your function names are not typical. Like, don't call a function codes or, you know, things that already exist that you're going to overwrite. And so this is going to be equal to the sum. And you see how it shows you that I've defined that? And interestingly, the sum function already exists. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Okay. And so this is my sum. So what I typically do with things like that, I'm going to exit that I just escaped, and I'm going to call this my sum. Whoa. Okay. So equals my. See, it shows it that it's there. It sees it as Great. a function, just like any other ones. And that's what's nice with Excel. You actually like, oh, what is that function that starts with an M? You can actually scroll down and see what the functions are. Mm -hmm. Hey, so I have a question. So when you're editing yeah. here on Visual Basic, do you have to like save for it to go into effect or just automatically no. updating as you're... It's, it's automatically, VBA is, is automatically part of Excel. Okay, got it. Okay, it's integrated. You'll want to save. Oh, and then you'll see what happens when you save. You have to save it as a macro enabled uh, file. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a regular XLS. So now I can say, yeah. So you didn't uh, do the record macro again, right? Is no, I just no... wrote a function. Okay. Yeah. So you could record it doing a, a you could record this, but then it would have hard drives. Hard, uh, let's try that afterwards, okay? So I'm writing my sum of this comma that. And it gives me those values. Zero. Why is it giving me zero? Oh, okay. So it gave me zero, right? Mm -hmm. And if I do it again, so now I can just kind of carry this down to the bottom, right? So this is my sum of those two. And you have Excel, you can double click on those things. So mm -hmm. what happens in these functions is if you don't send anything back, it's not going to do anything. So this could just be an action. Mm -hmm. function okay so it could be doing like the macro that we had what you want to do is at the end of it send back something so you could say return sum okay now if i double click on this and re-perform it it's going to say hey it doesn't like it okay excel doesn't do the return value function that other programming languages have what you have to do is you say, you take the name of the function, okay? The name of the function is equal to that. MATLAB has the same feature, but it's just oh. a slightly different way of defining At the, the variables, time. right? Now, you see how it's still highlighted? Because it, we're in the middle of a macro, but I fixed it, so I'm just gonna stop it, okay? I fixed my mistake, and let's see if that works. Yep, it worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, now, really you, nice. You could do it. Let's try what you had done. So I'm going to record a macro, okay? 
um, a dint sum. Okay. And here we're going to put in equals this plus that. Okay. Sure. Oh, you get the same sign. If you look to the right, while I was doing this, and I'm still recording, and I'm still in the middle of recording, you can actually see the code being written. See that, that it wrote that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, but as you can see that this is, I'm gonna stop recording. Well. Here's what we could do. We could give this a name. But since it was recorded after using that my sum function, it doesn't record the previous actions for, for example, defining new function and right. making the yeah. current be. Right. I wonder, yeah, it'd be kind of, um, no, it records from when you started to when you ended. Okay. So Which. this is a handy, another handy way of defining functions if you're doing like kind of recursive operations, right? Because this is defining it as row column minus three and minus two. And I don't like this kind of format. I have a hard time doing that. Okay, but you could do it that way. But I kind of like, I mean, we're used to doing writing real equations like this. This is so much cleaner. Yeah, Sylvia, I had a question. So yeah. in the syntax, when you're outputting what you want to be on that cell, it has to be the same name as what you called your function. For example, you said my sum equals sum. Like it mm -hmm. would have to be my sum. It can't be like um, A equals something. Like it has to be, or my sum, it has to be like matching with the function name, right? Right, it's the function name. It's okay. what you're sending back. Okay. Yeah. It always has to be what you're sending back. Yeah. And this is really the, the difference between VBA and Python and um, I'm working with Python and R and MATLAB and it's all about just changing the format. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes it's and really so you, hard to take making, I mean, keep them all in the mind. I yeah, sometimes it's you kind of, you go back to a script and you go, oh, okay, that's what it's done. And if you're, you know, not familiar with it, you can always Google things like that. So that's what I do is I kind of to remind myself, I just go back to Google and I know mm -hmm. what the problems are. And if you did it wrong, it will complain. Now, a nice thing about it is you can put in intermediate steps. So if you put in debug.print, what I, this is what I typically do. Okay. Debug. So it's just a debugger. Okay. It tells me where I ended up. Okay. And so as I run this, so I'm going to call this, uh, I'm, I'm just re-clicking on it, right? Which is recalling it. Mm -hmm. You'll see as I press enter in all three cases, because it's updating all of them because I've changed the function. I'm in the elf, else case. Meaning those are not the same. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Nice. And so it's a good way to kind of look at intermediate values. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I will just, when I'm working on it, I just have one version of it. So I'll remove these so that it's only, oh, and then you go here, you put the mouse inside the immediate window and you do control A, Backspace, or I think there's like a control K way of clearing it. Okay, so I like to just clear that up because it doesn't get cleared every time. I will double click on this, have it evaluated, and it tells me. So it's a nice way of just having little debug commands here and there. There's a lot of functions that you can do in um, Excel. So one thing you can do is in passing in ranges like arrays. Um, is something you need to practice and it's a little bit more advanced, but one way to do it is, for example, I'm going to name this range um, a list. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to call this um, a2 list. I should have called the other one a1 list. Okay. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to say function play, not send anything in, okay? And I'm going to say a list equals range a list. And that was a2 list equals range a2 list. Okay. For i equals u bound, just, no, I always get those wrong, l bound, the lower bound of a list, okay? Because this could be zero and it could be one. You know how different programming languages start the indexing either yes. at zero or at one? Mm -hmm. In Excel, you can actually tell it where to start, but I think the default is zero. I like to not assume until, unless I've, there's a, I have to always go back to my other scripts to know what the command is at the top that says, you know, start from one. But just to be sure, I'm going to say range for I from L bound, the lower bound of A list to U bound of A list. Um, U bound starts from one, right? We don't know. It doesn't matter. Right? Okay. I'm just going to say start going through this array. So debug print a list sub i. Next i. Okay? So now when I read these lists, okay? We're going to go and this is going to go and grab this A list here. But in Excel, it's general. This is not a 1D array. It can actually be a 2D array. It just happens to only have one column. Okay, so this is a 3 by 1. So what I need to do in this case, when I've just read it from somewhere, I haven't sent it in as an array. Um, because the other thing you could do is function play array. Here, let's do this first. B array equals array of one, two, three. Okay, I've defined my array internally. Then I can say for i equals l bound B array to u bound B array debug print b array sub i next i okay i'm not sending anything in so i can just run this macro okay and you should see down below one two and three okay so you could do whatever operation so we could do is sum equals zero and then here you could say sum equals sum plus the array of i debug print sum. I never I get confused with the and sum. Run this. Oof, the sum is equal to six. So what that um, actually uh, I mean lower bound to upper bound does in the for loop? It gets you, so L bound is what is the starting index of, of the array. this array? And what array. is the ending index? So if you want to know what the length of your array okay. equals the U bound minus L bound plus one. Okay, got you. Okay. Um, so it's a way of just knowing where the, I like it because it's not forcing me to know. Mm -hmm. Did you have to look up that command to know that that's Yeah. What okay. What you do is, you know, I want to learn about arrays. There's some nice um, tutorials online on getting started with VBA. I highly recommend sometimes. I like to look at commands and kind of see what it is that I need or you inherit a script from somebody and I start going, oh, what does this mean? So the indexes are now here is from one to three, right? I believe it's from zero to three. 
So zero to three. Debug print I. Yeah, I equals zero to two. The okay. default in VBA is zero. Okay, gotcha. Okay, is there any way I like to, like to just run one of these functions and see the outputs of one of them, like like selecting them, selecting the desired function, and then like click on that run button? Because now mm -hmm. I guess all of them, all three functions are run together. I mean, no, 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 no. The, my mouse is here. See, I'm just the things just get dumped there. I just clear the screen at the bottom. I, it's only running the one that I'm at. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So what I okay. could do here is in this function, I could say C equals my sum of, and it's really cool when you're here because it tells you what it is that it's looking for. You see how it's suggesting you what the input variables are? Uh -huh. This is from my function. It's like I'm calling my sum three comma five. So you can call it there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I can say debug. You can debug print or you can return at the end. We could say, you know, play array equals my sum. Great. Um, but I like to just debug print. C and C. So I can clear this up. And you'll see that it only did this and it actually did three plus five. It called that function. Nice. Okay. So this is a typical thing that we use is all just these loops, right? For statements and if statements is 99% of our code. It's very nice. Another feature that is really nice and for this, I'm going to pull out the script um, that I already done is um, it's opening up a big file. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you. There's two things I want to show you. One is that you can read uh, files, and the other thing is I want to show you is the conditional formatting, uh, and uh, another feature that's nice. So here's the big Excel sheet that is for the NGA. Um, if you look at the Visual Basic, and this I just kind of want to show you because um, you see I have all these different modules. Just put it on the right hand side just because I have all these different modules and each module kind of has one function or a group of related functions so it's a really nice way of just keeping things organized uh -huh. um, and this is a script that I've wrote that grabs see I have a whole bunch of CSV files from uh, from Nico's model Okay, I want to read all these files and bring them into my table, into my Excel file. And it's really nice. This is when it's handy to do the programming because you don't have to copy and paste. Okay, and I want to just kind of go through it to show you what you can do because then for your specific case, uh, you kind of just practice with what you need. Okay, so what this is doing is um, loading the data. You've got to do some dim initialization sometimes of certain vectors and arrays uh, but not always um, this is telling you hey we're working on the worksheet kbgd level uh, data tables okay uh -huh. so it's it's a tab that is here but it's actually hidden okay so it's actually here okay so what i've done is i put all those files into a single table okay but each group in that table, each file actually has a name. Remember those file names? So I've actually grouped it. As I uploaded it, I then named the contents of that file. And that's these rows in this large table. About 800 rows typically. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I did is I uploaded a file. Here's a file name. And then I wrote the file. 
and the contents of that file are then stored to a variable name that you see it right here on the top left. Okay, so that later when I do my program, I just reference this table, this range. Okay, so that's what this script here is doing. So, and it's going to do everything in the out worksheet label is going to be KBG data tables. That's what that matches. Okay? okay. So first it's going to clear the contents of that page. Okay. And then it says this folder, I've actually defined a list of, let's see what this folder is, right? So I, I copy that name, put it here and it's going to show me, oh, I may have removed. Okay, KBG 19. Oh, because I renamed everything. Oh, there it is. Data folder, right? Oh, but I just, oh, where did you go? Where are you? I don't know, because I don't use the script anymore. I just did this once and then I ended up having to remove things and rename things. Okay. Anyways, so this is a list of the file names. So this is the path. Okay. And this is a list of the file names. And I believe it's, oh, I know why it's not showing it to you because it's a hidden sheet. Okay. There it is. I think it's ABGB data folder. No, I may have removed unhide. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay. So now let's find that data folder. Yeah, see, that's the path of where it's at. Okay, I've defined it. And then this here is a list of files that we're going to open. Okay. And you can see here it's got a name as to what that list of files is, which is what this is. Okay. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that list of files one at a time. So that's just the index. Okay. So it's going to be from zero to whatever, you know, 25 or 24. But as you can see here, look at the very top line. It says option base one. Mm -hmm. So that actually is now going to start that indexing from one. But make sure you put that little line into every single one of your pages of your modules. Okay. Because it's module dependent. Yeah. So option cool. base one, which is why I typically don't use it. I just let Excel do its own thing. I had to because this, the program that I received from Nico actually refers to specific indices in the table and his counting started from one. So I had to go with one. Okay, typically I don't because I forget to put it at the top of my modules. We have a question, Sylvia. So even though yeah. you do this lower bound, upper bound, don't you still have to know like which number it's ordering so that what you do inside the loop makes sense? So you don't go like out of bounds, I guess? Uh, no, because I'm literally, I never really use this um, variable other than just grabbing it from there. So I'm going from the lowest, so I'm going from the first element to the last element of that uh, list. Yeah. yeah. So call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter because I don't do operations on iFile. Got it. Okay. It's just a dummy internal variable. Okay. So, so, so yes. can I ask a question? So of when course. you when you use this L bound U bound, you don't need any more that option based one, right? If if you, if you are not doing like any like operation on the indexes itself. Right, exactly. You want to just grab, okay. Yeah, you don't have to do it. Most of the time you don't. As I said, I had the, the algorithm I was given was referencing one, two, three, four, five. Uh -huh. So it was really nice in Excel because I could just say, okay, start counting from one. In gotcha. Python, I had to put in a spacer in the, <laughs> I had to add a zero element to all my arrays so I wouldn't have to go and change those references. Gotcha. Um, so uh, starting from zero is the computer science way of doing it. Right. Um, 
but engineers like to count from one. Right. So, um, so that's why I use this all the time so that I never have to worry about what is my reference index. Okay, got you. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you need to use that index, what you could do is just, so if I have to use iFile, okay, to do some uh -huh. operations, you can always say, so this counter equals I file minus L bound sum of file list. Okay. So if L bound is zero, this value is going to go from, so let's see here. I'm going to just put in this counter I. So if I file is zero, um, this counter is going to be zero minus zero is zero, right? Mm -hmm. If this is one, two, so start with, okay, so it's going to be zero, one, two, three, right? Correct. If I start it with one, what is this going to be? Zero again. Yeah. So if you want to use that the first time is going to be one, all you have to do is do that. So this is pretty much zero for the first index uh -huh. plus one. Okay. Okay, so that's one way of knowing which file number you are starting from one, if you need to do something with it. Another way of doing it is you do I row equals zero. And then, or let's just call it I counter equals zero. And then I say I counter equals I counter plus one. Okay, so well, now I know that the first time around is going to be one. Okay. So those are ways of forcing it. What's nice is this is independent of whether it starts from zero or from one. Yeah. Okay, so that's how I get around if I have to know and I'm counting and then I decide, okay, I want to count from zero or I want to count from one in operations. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to just erase this. So now I go file name. And there's also a command for each, which is really nice because the for each is literally going to go for each item. So it kind of combines these two lines together. Okay. So that's another way of doing it. For each statements are wonderful. Um, but the formatting on those gets a little bit trickier sometimes. So I just like just go with the basic. Um, so I've got the file label. So now I'm going to say, the file name is going to be the folder plus the file name plus .csv. Mm -hmm. okay. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to go, hey, go to that worksheet. The name of that worksheet is fixed at the top. Okay. So that if I want to, I can loop or do it something else. Go to range A1. So go to cell A1 offset by this amount of rows. And right now, my I add offset is zero. So that's going to be the very, very first one, right? Uh -huh. And guess what? I bet at the end of my loop, I'm going to increment this value. Yeah, you see, I add it. Every time I go through, uh -huh. I add a row. Go to the next row, go to the next row, right? Got it. Okay. And so this is how I like to write to cells. And then I'm going to say offset zero. So in column zero offset. And one offset, I'm going to put in the file label and the file name. Remember, that's what that was in the very first one. Okay. So this was the file label. And you can see it, the value there. And this is the full path. Uh -huh. Okay. Cool. And then I'm going to say, okay, increase the row. Okay. And I believe I do it again. But now I'm going to say, okay, open up a file. And this is something easy to just, I always kind of look up, okay? So it's going to say, okay, 
This is a file number, it's just an ID. It's just Excel form, VBA formatting. Uh, and it's gonna say, open up that file for input, it means we're just reading it, and we're gonna call it this file number. Okay, which it has made up for us. You can actually give it a name if you want. I could say, my file. Mm -hmm. And then you put in, found my file. Okay. Uh, and this is where I open it, I read it, and I believe, don't I close it? You should close it. Oh, I didn't close it. So at the end of that, you should always close it with a close pound i file. If you read thousands, um, Windows has a limitation of how many files you can have open at a time. Uh -huh. And it's always better to just close the file as soon as you've read it, okay? So what this is going to do is I'm going to read line by line, okay? While I haven't hit the end of the file, read this line. If that line is not blank, then split that line because it reads it as a single text. Split mm -hmm. it, and I believe a character 10 is a comma because it's a CSV. Uh -huh. So it's going to split that string into an array. And now for each item in that array, look at that, mm -hmm. you bound and L bound. Okay. Um, and, and sometimes it sees it as a line. It, there's, you, you really have to like play with this a bit because it, what it's actually doing is it depend. Oh yeah. Because these were made from, um, these were made from a Mac. And so this is actually breaking down the file. If it's made from a Mac, it sees the whole file as a single line. And so what I'm saying here is um, break that file by, this is a carriage return. Okay, so these are the actual lines. So this loop is actually done once only. And then now that data line that I have here, if it's non-blank, okay, it, I kind of play with it. I have to replace the spacers with commas and I format it, okay? And every case is unique because it depends on the format of what you're reading. And then it's, once it's broken up into a vector, I write to each sheet, to the sheet in different columns. Here's your offset here. Okay, and I don't want to get into the specific details okay. of this case. Okay, but you kind of play with the, to see your debug print, to see what the pieces are that it's reading, and you figure out how to break it up. And then now in the worksheet, I write, I give it a value of the value that I've gotten from this array from each item in the line. And I keep on offsetting by the column. Okay, and so that outputs in each one of these columns. And then you do this for each file, for each row, it increments. See, I'm incrementing. Once I'm done with one line, I'm going on to the next line in my output. Okay. Gotcha. And nice. so this is how I've created this. And now I kept track of the starting row for this file and the ending row, and I'm giving it a name. Okay, where's the name? Uh, oh, and the name for that bunch is the file label. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not trivial, but once you start kind of building a library and you kind of, oftentimes you can Google how to read a CSV file and you will find scripts like this. CSV files are tricky because uh, in Microsoft, the in I'm sorry in in a Mac the carriage return how a line the line breaks are different than if they're created from the um, ASCII Windows file. Okay. But so you typically wouldn't have this problem if this is a file that you generated. And you shouldn't deal with people who deal with Macs. Okay. So this is one way of and and the, what I wanted to show you is the power of being able to read these files uh, and writing them to here. Well, you can also write, you see how this is like value? Okay. What you mm -hmm. could do is, and I want to show you an example, um, that you can actually write, 
uh, let me just create a new macro here. Insert module. And this is just to play function add function. Okay. And I'm going to say, you know, you would have to write the location, you know, with that offset and things. Um, but here's how we're going to do it. So I'm going to do record macro first, okay? Equals three times four. Okay. And I'm going to stop my macro. I want to look at that macro. Okay. So I'm actually just going to go and play with this. So you see how this has formula R1, C1? Okay. So what you could do is you could put in formula equals three times actually a apple. Okay. Where somewhere else we defined three here and we give it a name, apple. Okay. So I just want to show you that this is going to... Let's remove this. This macro here is going to put in a function there. It should put in a function there. See? It's equal to three times apple. Not sure. So you don't have to write. And this is way up ahead, advanced and things, but you can actually write functions into these cells. You don't have to just write um, values. So if you define a vector with a, with a given name like apple, would it, be mm -hmm. in, would it be insert uh, three times of that vector in your desired location? It, you you got to be careful because you can't just put into a cell a three times a vector. You can, oh, but okay. so that's a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So, but you can write uh, three times um, my sum of three plus four plus apple. Oh, okay. See, and now it's going, wait a minute, where's my sum? Because I'm in a new worksheet. Okay. And I haven't defined my sum. So, so each function, I mean, all functions just are recognizable at the, at the, uh, like the corresponding worksheet? Yeah. Okay. They're all internal to the worksheet, unless you build templates and things like that. There's ways of having, building a functions worksheet that then gets referenced. <laughs> I don't do that. I just copy these modules, then I just copy the modules over to another file. Okay, so gotcha. You just kind of go like this. Poof. And I don't know if this moves it or copies it. So uh, you could do. Let's see, did that? Let's see if we can move this one up here. Yeah, you see? It can copy them over. There it is. Pretty cool, huh? So I typically just carry what I have, what I need. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show you that's really nice about Excel is two more features. So with the VBA, you can do a million things, okay? Um, and then you can actually assign macros to actions. So for example, here, I have this pull-down menu, and I'll show you how to make a pull-down menu that when the, chain, the value of this cell changes, it actually runs a macro. And this macro actually changes, um, turns this sheet in auto compute versus not computing because all these cells have so many functions, okay? Right. Um, so you can actually turn off a worksheet if you want to, okay? Um, now, what you see here, you see how this color, when that was on, these are yellow, and when it's off, they turn pink. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are two things. One is I want to show you how I create this pull-down menu, and two is how we can make these be pink or yellow. Okay, pull-down menu is very easy. You go to a cell here, for example, and you go to the data. And what this is is actually called the data validation. So this cell can only have certain values, and you prescribe them, okay? So this one here, I go data validation, and I've already built it into here, but it can only come from a list. So if you want, 
you know, you can give ranges of values. It needs to be a decimal. It needs to be this or that. Or you can define a list. And in the list here, you write on or off or Sylvia if you want. Okay. And now this pull down menu is going to have on, off, and Sylvia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those are the only things that are allowed on this cell. Um, one kind of problem with Excel is that that font there that you saw was tiny just stays tiny. You can format it so well. Okay. So that's data validation. Here, I'm letting you pull out from any one of these regions that I've defined. So the data validation for this cell is actually a list, but this is a named row of cells. Remember, we named this region list and actually shows you what that region ID list is. Oh, cool. Okay. If you want, otherwise, you can go, hey, grab it from this list. Okay. So those are the options. Mm -hmm. Oh, it actually added it on. That's so cool. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So it's actually, actually making it that much longer. Oh, so expanded. Yeah. And so you can concatenate pretty much, I believe. I like to just kind of keep things clean and just do this. Okay. I think you got to, you choose here and how to do certain things as well. Okay. You get to play. If there, you can put the input and error message if somebody puts in the wrong values. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so that's a cell validation. It's really nice because now your user knows what to input. I don't have to tell you, you know, put one, two, three, four or something. And then, um, how are these yellow? So for this, you go back to your home, and this is called condition of formatting. And if we're gonna, I've already defined something, so I'm gonna manage it because it's already done. And you can set a whole bunch of like rules, if it's this, if it's left. So what this is, okay, I'm gonna edit what it is that I did, and it says, if the lowercase, of the left three characters of cell F13, which is cell F13 is this guy right here, right? So if, what did I do? Hold on, because <laughs> I edited, but okay. So if lowercase, so somebody can write uppercase off and it's still gonna be the same thing, right? So I always like to say the lowercase, of the left three characters of that variable is equal to, to off, then make this pink. Oh, that's you. Okay, and these were originally yellow. So, so it's like an if, if condition. Yeah, it's an if condition. And what's really cool is, you see in Excel, the dollar signs, do you guys familiar with the dollar signs in front of the cell locations? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so this is fixed. It's not the one to the left because you can carry this on for all of these that it could be, you know, the one to the left or its own. You can really play with what cell is what and, mm -hmm. you know, for ranges. So this, this can get pretty advanced and pretty cool. Right. And so this has been defined and so it makes it red. Okay, you can make it bold. Mine is always bold. And so it's really just a change in format. And this is applicable to F16 to 28 to 30. Oh, it's not to all of them? That's weird. 16 to 28, 30 to 33. Oh, somehow it, it kind of got broken up because I inserted cells. But this should actually just be for this whole range. Right? Correct. If you don't put, uh, so this can get really advanced and really cool what you could do with conditional formatting. So it's really great because you could use it in, hey, so here's all my data, right? Right. What I want to do is conditional formatting. And there's so many ways of doing it. You can actually just do color scales here. Look, this shows me the highest and lowest values. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, or you could say um, if one is equal to the other. I don't have that here because it's they're all different. Um, but you could do it. What I typically do is I use a formula to determine how to format it. 
And so I say, if this value is greater than 0 0.5, then make it fill yellow, okay? Now, you see how it's dollar sign, dollar sign? So uh -huh. this is all dependent on that single cell. So I'm gonna s remove that. So it's gonna okay. be for all the cells that you, that you selected, right? Right, and their own individual value. Oh, okay. Nice. And so now it's highlighting any cell whose value is greater than half. Great. And you could do formula. This actually, there's other, there's some help, you know, in between values less than or equal to and things like that. So what I typically do is I will do it with a single cell and then expand that rule to whatever other cells I want. Nice. Okay. So this is a really, this is what I was telling you about the nice features of Excel is this being actually able to see these data and see that things don't make sense or do make sense. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. See yeah. you. I, I think I've covered the highlights of what it is that I, I play with. There's a million other things that Excel can do that people don't know about and people that don't know Excel, they, they don't like it, but these additional features just make it so because then I can hand you this data and you can interpret it and you can understand what I'm doing also. All right. Got any questions or particular things you want to know? This one was really cool. I mean, I guess um, the best thing is to just play, play with it and then like mm -hmm. search about it and yeah, the Google yeah. stuff. Yeah. Working yeah. on that, working on that makes it more like uh, frequently using that makes it more like fluent to use. Yeah. Yeah, and, and sometimes just knowing that you can do these things, now you know what to look for. Um, yep. It's really cool to look at data, you know, to say, oh, are these two values the same? Is it the same as the previous value? And so you can see if things have changed. And you know, we're doing a lot of data processing. It's a good way to visualize it. Thank you very much, Silvia. Thank you. Thank you so uh -huh. I really appreciate it.